Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, aliens and humans alike. This is Robert Phoenix. Tonight is the 19th of September, and you are listening to the Sunday version of Free Association Radio, Far Sunday. And uh, tonight, I'm uh, really grateful and thrilled to have our guest on from all the way from South Africa. Uh, his name is Michael Tellinger. And Michael is a cosmologist, amongst many other things. And he has really spent um, the latter part of, oh, I'd say, the last uh, five to ten years going deeply into the, uh, the story of the human species, genetics, DNA, and in particular, some very interesting finds in his uh, native South Africa. Uh, from Eric Von Donneken to Zechariah Sitchin to our guest tonight, Michael Tellinger, uh, many people, uh, in, in the uh, many researchers and writers in the modern era, have been uh, excited, curious, and, and at times even obsessed with the origin of our species. Uh, Zechariah Sitchin, of course, is probably the uh, the, the modern uh, sort of gatekeeper and uh, knowledge keeper of the 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 tale of the Anunnaki and uh, the planet Nibiru. And Sitchin, of course, uses the Epic of Gilgamesh for the, uh, for, the, for the foundation of his exploration and discoveries. And it's become his philosopher's stone, his Rosetta stone, to understand who we are and where we came from. Of course, Eric Von Donneken used a number of pieces from all over the planet, uh, everything from uh, the... Uh, uh, writings and etchings on temple walls in Palenque to uh, tapestries in churches in uh, Central Europe. And uh, there, are, there are many other folks out there who are desperately trying to understand who we are and where we came from. Who created us? Are we just a series of accidents or are we a race of beings that have been literally farmed here for a number of different reasons. And was there really only one race that ha that's farmed us and it became our, quote, unquote, uh, our, 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 our agents, so to speak, on, on this world, our agencies? Are there more than one uh, iteration of the human species? And if so, when did those iterations occur? So... Without further ado, I'm going to bring Michael Tellinger on tonight. Now, here's how tonight's going to go. Michael's going to be on with us for an hour. Okay, He's been uh, touring uh, uh, fairly nonstop uh, throughout the United States, and he's had four back-to-back -back nights. And uh, my friends down in Taos just hosted him and said he was terrific. So he's, uh, he's, he's a little spent. So we're going to have him on for an hour. We're going to try to get into the meat of this. And if you want to call in a little bit later, probably about 45 minutes into the show. I'll take a few phone calls. And uh, if you have any pressing questions that you've always wanted to ask Michael, and I know some of you out there are already familiar with his work, you can call in and we'll take a few calls at the end of the show. But without further ado, for the next hour, let's uh, journey through time and explore our origins, the origins of the species with Michael Tellinger. Good evening, Michael. How are you? Hi, Robert. Excellent. Thanks for having me on your show. It's lovely to be talking to you and to be in the United States. And as you mentioned, uh, taking a, a, a night out uh, after four days back to back, which has been quite grueling. So a friend of mine down in Taos who went and saw you said he's deeply connected and witchy smart. <laughs> That's those are very kind words. I appreciate getting feedback like that. It's always nice, you know. You never know how people take the stuff in, you know. That, that I do my presentation, and, and, you know, obviously I put a lot of effort. It takes a lot of energy. And then people talk to you afterwards, and then they leave. But you never really get to know until you get feedback from other sources of, of what people had to say. And to hear positive feedback is, is always wonderful. It, it it's uh, it it makes it all it makes it all worth the effort and you know the journey through the United States as we are taking now. So uh, just to give uh, folks an idea as to what you're doing right now, you're on a pretty uh, far-reaching tour of the United States. Now, how many how many dates are you into this tour currently? Well, we we have 26 um, stops, 26 presentations throughout the USA, starting in New York all the way down the East Coast and across 
the USA up the Californian coast all the way to the north and then back across, making our way back to Vermont. And it's 26 stops. And we are, tomorrow we're in Phoenix or Scottsdale. Uh, and that is number 12, stop number 12, yeah. Okay, so you've, you've done 11, you've got 12, so Mars 12, so you've got another 15 stops. Now, um, the, the person that turned me on to you uh, is uh, Janet Gautier, who is the wife of Brad Hoffemeyer, who actually interviewed you down at house. Okay. And uh, yeah. Janet was raving about the presentation of the show, and she said that, that really it all comes together with the visuals and everything that you bring. Can you talk a little bit about your presentation and uh, and I know that's kind of part of your background as well. Can you can you talk about how you brought this all together so you can really give people a, a much fuller understanding about your work? Sure. Um, and thanks for allowing me to do that because you know it's not always that that people ask this kind of question or, or or interviewers or media people. So you know when you start talking about the origins of humankind and and ancient human history and ancient civilizations, um, people people have preconceived ideas about these things. So what I've what I've done in my presentation is pull together what seems to be a very disparate uh, image of human origins and and religion and, <clears throat> and and civilizations and and ancient cultures and so forth and and show show the people how everything is actually connected and it all comes from the same source, the same source that some in some circles is called unity. And um it, that, once you get that, it becomes really exciting. And then, it, uh, and then, um, what I do is I also link it to um, sometimes uh, refer to as esoteric information, like um, you know, uh, sacred geometry and so forth, which you realize very quickly is nothing wishy-washy about. That is actually we're dealing with the laws of nature here, that mankind has been really struggling to try and define with with our feeble attempts in in physics and science and maths and chemistry to try and understand the laws of nature and we are far very very far from that and once you start studying that and realizing how the laws of nature or sacred geometry forms the basis of all stuff in the universe and how it pulls everything together it starts to form a very fascinating tapestry that links ancient knowledge and ancient cultures all together and then, and then we start looking at, um, you know, presenting Sumerian tablets and what we read and and, tra get, and translations of the Sumerian tablets. And you, you mentioned Zechariah Sitchin, and obviously he is by far the most, um, you know, outstanding scholar who has taken that under his wing and has become the foremost translator and and uh, proponent of the Anunnaki and explaining to us what is really going on in the Sumerian tablets in his translations. And then, but the one thing that Zechariah Sitchin has not been able to deliver, and neither have any of the other researchers and translators, is deliver the physical evidence and the physical proof for their translations and their theory based on those translations or their conclusions on those translations. And that's really where we step in and where I, when I, where I come in and bring the physical evidence and the physical proof of these ancient civilizations at the tip of southern Africa going back to about 300,000 years ago um, mining gold and linking them directly to the arrival on earth of the Anunnaki or as the Bible calls them the Anakim, the giants and creating a cloned species which they refer to in the translations as the Lulu Amelu or the primitive worker and their single-minded objective was to mine gold and this is the, the discoveries that we've now made, and I have linked very, I believe, clearly with the discoveries that I've made over the last two or three years um, to these ancient cultures. And not only that, but also um, by strange sequence of, of coincidences, discovering that these ancient cultures had an advanced knowledge of technology and energy and the knowledge of frequency and how to use all that energy, sound frequencies, and and frequency for everything that they did, and that is really what um, what I guess is the the the, the punchline that I deliver. Right, and the the physical evidence that you refer to, 
uh, according to your website and uh, your work, is this the Adamic calendar? Is this one of the pieces of evidence? Well, Adam's calendar is uh, is one of the pieces of evidence, absolutely. We now are starting to call it Enki's calendar because we are convinced from a number of supportive pieces of evidence that it was actually a calendar site that was that was um, you know constructed or or commissioned by Enki, the Sumerian, um, one of the three, what you could call it, the Holy Trinity of the Sumerian religion, Anu and his two sons Enlil and Enki, and uh, Enki uh, was the, the the creator god of the the human race and uh, the geneticist and the medicine man, and uh, he was the guy that set up all the mining operations in southern Africa or what, in what the Sumerian tablets call calls the Abzu, and by reverse engineering that word Abzu, you work out very quickly where the Abzu is. If it is indeed the place where all the gold came from, then there can be absolutely no doubt that the Abzu is in southern Africa, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Botswana, and Mozambique, pretty much concentrated in that area. And uh, so, so yes, um, the Enki's calendar is one of the, the, the arguments that we, or Adam's calendar as we call it in our book, and, uh, but that's just a flagship in in among millions of stone ruins that points to a very, very vast vanished civilization that was destroyed by some sort of cataclysm um, about probably, my guess is, uh, about twelve to 13,000 years ago in which what we refer to as the flood and what all ancient cultures refer to as, as the flood as well. Right. In the, in the epic of Gilgamesh, uh, Anwell is he's responsible for bringing on the flood. Isn't that correct? Well, what what seems to be the situation is that they recognized that the flood was going to happen as a result of a, a set of cosmic coincidences of cosmic activities when a large large celestial body, which many people believe to be the planet Nibiru, uh, that is still questionable. But you know, let's let's leave it at that. Some right. celestial body came into very close proximity of planet Earth, and uh, it was so close, it came so close that the geophysical forces were so huge that they caused the ice sheets of Antarctica to slide into the oceans and caused giant tidal waves to just make their waves like giant rubber bands moving from south to north mm -hmm. across planet Earth and just destroyed all civilization, pretty much all life and and all all structures and any kind of uh, you know dwellings or cities or, or habitation and caused havoc on planet Earth. And what what the Sumerian tablets seem to tell us is that Enki and Enlil and Anu and all the Sumerian uh, the Anunnakis knew about this impending disaster, so they prepared themselves for it. Mm -hmm. and, they, and it seems that Enlil himself, who at that point in time had enough of this new creation and the trials and tribulation on this planet called Earth, uh, decided that they would use this 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 occasion to wipe out what they've created and what they've started on planet Earth. Right, right. 